Rugby Euro 2022 coverage continues here, right here, right now. Of course, as we look forward to part two of match day number one, that involves Group C and D. Who's going to get themselves off to a flyer and who's going to get themselves off to an absolute stinker? Well, waste no more time. Let's get into it. another production video today we're taking a look at match number one part two of euro 2022 the ladies game that's right of course and we're going to get into that in just one second if you know where you've been smash your subscribe and keep back to all things euro 2022 related blab and Rovers related women's football itself related boys because it is of course a, an area of the game we've never explored before but of course cash is it getting out of predictions of course the cat and of course millie has been giving her predictions uh as a as a as a, uh, a better a better brain than mine at the moment but of course hope Hopefully, at the end of this, we'll be uh, a much better for it. This is an educational process for me, and hopefully it is for you. Of course, uh, it is uh, getting a lot more coverage on the TV. And, of course, that is a, is a great thing for all of us because we love football, we love the game, and it doesn't matter who's playing it, uh, of course. Anyway, we'll get into that in a minute. Of course, please shout out to my VRPs. They're the patrons, guys. But anyway, let's remind ourselves, of course, of the nations of Group C and D. Those are the games that we're going to take a look at today. Just four, uh, is it four of them, four games to be had. But these are the nations of of course, eight of them in all its glory. Uh, in fact, uh, before that, let's take a look. Take a, a small notion here for the Prediction League. A brand new squeaky clean Prediction League. You still have time to get your match day number one part ones in. You just same link, get involved. It is fun. Get involved with this. Free as well. Uh, I don't know what we're doing about prizes. I'm still trying to uh, get up to date with the last uh, season's prizes. And uh, I know that it seems to be a, a vicious circle, but hopefully we'll get that sort out. But this is a, a demo for the new season. We are going to be using Super brew i think uh it makes things a shit ton of easier for me and a lot more enjoyable for you and there's a connection to be a lot of points on offer if you can get the actual scores right so get involved get in, get in amongst it there's four or five of them already uh, people in there as of recording on the 2nd of july but anyway these are the nations of group c and it is the dutchies pass the dutchies on the left hand side yes that's right the dutchies there group a winners they secured the deal on the 23rd of october 2020 fourth finals for them 2017 was the last and guess what they won the pissing thing fourth in the world according to the, to, to the rankings there, five to one to do the double, or, or of course win it back to back, back to back trophies for them. Uh, meanwhile, of course, La Sved qualified as Group F winners, 27th of October 2020, their 11th fi uh, f finals for them. 2017 was their last. They've only won it in 84, which is a bit of a shame. Second in the world rankings, they are a force to be reckoned with. Seven to one to go the distance. La Switzerland. Uh, of course, playoff winners secured the deal on the 13th of April 2021. This is a second final. 2017 was their last. And of course, in that last one, they only made the groups. Um, 20th according to the world uh, of the rankings there and 50 to 1 uh, to go the way and of course here we go late late edition of course only uh, secure the deal on the 2nd of May of course uh, Portugal uh, replacing Russia of course who kicked out uh, second finals for them 2017 was their last they never made it out of the group stages 29th of course according to the fact the rankings there and 150 to 1 they could be the chief whipping ladies of this one so we'll see uh, moving on forward then uh, Belgium uh, to group D now of course are uh, in their group H winners 1st of December 2026 Second finals for them, 2017 was their last. Uh, they made the, they only made groups, of course, for their 19th, according to the rankings there, 16 to 1 or 66 to 1 to go the bloody distance. Meanwhile, of course, Iceland are in their group F runners up, 1st of December 2020. Fourth, of course, uh, finals for them, 2017 was the last. They have made the quarterfinals back in 2013. That's been a while, though. Uh, 16th, according to the rankings there, and 66 to 1. La France are in there, of course. Expect them to do some damage in this group. Group G winners, 27th of November 2020, 7th finals for them. 2017 was the last, but they never bested the, the quarterfinals. 2009, 2013, and 2017. 5th, according to the rankings, 5-1 to one to go the distance. Will they bloody do it? We'll have to see. And, of course, Italia, that's right, Group B runners up. Um, of course, 24th of Feb, they secured their deal. 12th uh, tournament for them. 2017 was the last. They were runners up in 93 and 97, but they're not the team that they should be. Uh, 14th, according to the rankings, at 25-1. to one. So, the Italians are 
are on there. In a, in a, a, a lopsided group, you think France would do well, and then who knows for the runs that it could be uh, anybody's guess. So wide open. So today we're going to take a look at, of course, Group C and D. And again, joining me will be Millie, of course, with her expert predictions. Of course, we're trying to mix it up a little bit. She might go a little bit curveball, of course. But of course, we're going to try and cover uh, all the games uh, as much as we can do. Again, Millie, what do you, any any of these uh, eight nations stand out for you? We've got we got the Dutch in there. We've got the the Italians. Any one of them eight nations in Group C or D that you think could be maybe a, a surprise package? You think? Well, I think that um, Portugal might step up a bit. Yeah, they were a last minute additions to the to the Euros. Of course, Russia kicked out. Portugal came in, uh, and yeah, so it's, and that's a great way to start, Millie. Well done, well done. We're going to segue right into that. So we're going to kick it all off for match number one over in Group C, and it will be Portugal. Of course, Millie did mention them. There could be a bit of su surprise package uh, coming at you up against the Swiss. That's right at the Lee Sports Village. That's right, of course. Um, I don't even know who plays there normally. That's not really a name that's rung rings my bells. Uh, but maybe it's a, it's a stadium used for women's football. I don't know. We're learning. We're learning about the women's game. It's going to be 2022, the year of the ladies. That's why we're going to hopefully have Rovers coverage, of course, about that. But I don't know about the Lee Sports Village, but it'll be the venue for Portugal up against the Swiss. Of course, Portugal uh, have played Switzerland four times in 2014. They've won two, but they've also lost two heading into this match. Their biggest win over Switzerland was a one-nil win. The biggest win for the Swiss over, of course, Portugal was a 3-1 win. Um, and of course, Portugal scored five goals compared to Switzerland six over the course of those... Uh, four matches works out around about 1.25 goals game ratio for Portugal compared to the 1.5 scored by Switzerland. Switzerland though coming to this absolutely horrific form, zero wins at the last six games, 17% form. Of course, up against Portugal though coming to, into this unbeaten though the last four, 58% form heading into this. The last time I played though there was a 3-1 win for Switzerland back in March 2019. Uh, it was in the Algarve Cup, uh, of course. And Portugal did pick up a draw against Australia. Good result that uh, in a friendly as they build up towards kickoff. Switzerland though did lose 4-0 to England. England. In fact, they haven't scored a goal in the last three games, so maybe, maybe uh, uh, Millie's onto something here by picking Portugal. Oh, did she might pick Portugal? She might not. But anyway, coming into some of the odds for this one, Portugal 3-1 to one for the victory. 10-7 to seven on is your Swiss, so the bookies back in the Swiss here, and 3-1 to one is your draw. Millie, what you got for this game? Portugal up against the Swiss. I said Portugal 3-2. She says she went bold. She went bold for this one. Big bold pick, pick for Portugal. Oh, any standouts for this game? Any names that, you, that, that we should keep an eye out for this game? So Portugal have got Inez Pereira and Jessica Silva. Um, Inez Pereira is a goalkeeper okay. and Jessica Silva is a forward. And as for Switzerland, they've got Leah Watty. I think that's uh -huh. how you pronounce it. Well, if, if we haven't got it right now, we will get it right by the end because it might be a name to, to watch out for. So we got picks in the house here. Millie has gone for a result here for Portugal. 3-2 win. For Portugal, I've gone the other way. 2 0 win for Switzerland. One of us is going to be right, unless it's a draw. Uh, next up, of course, we have the Netherlands, the Dutchies, up against Les Sved. Of course, this match will take place at Bramall Lane. Where's, where's Bramall Lane? Sheffield, right? That's right. Yeah. Sheffield, is, she's right on the money there. Mark Parsons is the manager for the Dutchies. Peter Goodhartson is the manager for the Swedes. They played each other seven times in 2012. Three wins for the Dutch, two for the Swedes, and two draws as well. Uh, the Dutchies come into this. Uh, four wins in the last six in all competitions. 67% form for them. Up against the Swedish, 92% uh, form, winning five of the last six. Of course, the biggest win for the Dutch over the Swedes, 2 0 win. The biggest win the other way was a 2 1 win for Sweden over the Dutchies. Of course, I'll tell you when that was in a second. So Seven goals scored by the, the, the Netherlands over Sweden since, of course, 2012. Five goals returned. Uh, works out around a one goal a game ratio for the Dutch, 0.71 goals a game ratio for Sweden. Uh, coming at you, though, last time the picture, there was a one near win for the Dutch against Sweden back in July 2019. That was in the semi finals of the World Cup. Goodness gracious me. Over extra time it was played there. And of course, the Dutchies go through. The last time Sweden won uh, was a 2 1 win, like I said, back in May 2015 way back in a friendly. Of course, uh, the Dutchies with a 3 0 win over Belarus back in 28th of June. Of course, also, they did get their asses spanked by, of course, English uh, back in 24th of June. Meanwhile, the Swedes picked up a 3 1 win over Brazil in a friendly, as, of course, they build up to kick off as well. The odds for this one coming at you uh, 31 to 20 is the Dutch, 21 to 10 is your draw, 13 to 8 is your Sweden. What you got for this one, Millie? I've said 0 0. Zero, 0 She's keeping it cl quite close to her chest. Any stars on this one for the Dutch or for the Swedes? So, Netherlands got Jill Roden, Vivian Medema. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, Jill Roden's a midfielder and Vivian is a forward. And oh. as for Sweden, they've got... Fr 
how do I pronounce this? Fridolina, roll four. Smashed it. Absolutely smashed it there, Millie. Well done uh, with their, their, their names that we are all hearing for the first time because we are new to the English of the ladies game, but we're going to be masters at the end of it. So, of course, Millie went with a 0-0. Zero, zero. I went with a 2-1 win for the Dutch. And again, one of us could be right, one of us could be wrong. And again, make sure you get your predictions in on the Super Brew link free. Get in it. It's good, good bit of fun. Maybe you can become a, a, the King Ping of women's football or the Queen Ping, whatever. Anyway, into the final group now is Group D we're going to go with the Belgians up against Iceland. Now, this match will take place uh, on the 10th of July at the Academy Stadium. No idea where that is. Uh, let me know down below. Of course, Belgium managed by Ivis Schmiels uh, up against Iceland's Torstein Haraldsson. Easy for you to say. Played each other three times, these two sides, uh, nations. Anyway, one win apiece and one draw. Wow, wow, wee, wow. Uh, of course, the Belgians coming into this winning for the last six, 67% form. Up against the Icelanders, just one defeat in the past six, 83% form. The biggest win for Iceland over Belgium, 2-1 win. The biggest win the other way was a 1-0 win. And they both scored two goals against each other uh, since, of course, since 2011. Works out around about 0.67 goals a game. Uh, they played each other last back in uh, 2016. It was in March. 2-1 win it was for the Icelanders. Uh, and that draw was way back in September 2011. Uh, coming at you, though, Iceland picked up a 3-1 win over Poland not too long ago. Belgium with a big 6-1 win over Luxembourg. The odds for this one, 6-5 is your Belgians, 9-5 is your Icelanders, 23-10 is your draw. But what is Millie going to say? I said for um, Belgium to actually win this. Belgium going to win this one. And, of course, I'm going to ask you who's the, the, top, the, the top Flemish Belgians and who's the top Icelanders, maybe. Belgium, they've got Justine van Havermeer. I think that's how you say it. Yep, yep. Sounds great. And Iceland, they've got Sveen Diz. I don't even want to pronounce that yeah. last name. Just say Sveen. <laughs> so, 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 so. There we go. Yeah. We, 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 we got it. We smashed it. So you went with Belgium. I think I went with Belgium on this. We might both uh, be on the money here. Yeah, you were 3-1 win. I've gone with a 3-0 win. So... Ain't too shabby on that one. And then wrap it up, wrap it up. For, of course, completing match day number one, we go over to uh, Group D, and it will be a bit of a heavyweight crunch clash, you would imagine. It is our uh, France up against Italy uh, over at the, uh, the 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 New York Stadium over in Rotherham. Of course, Corina Decare is the manager for France. Melina Batoli is the manager for Italy. Now, these two nations have played each other four times in 2005. Two wins for the French, nothing for Italy. Two draws, of course. The French come into this 100% four winning six on the bounce up against Italy, picking up just one defeat. The past six games, 83% form for them. The biggest win for France over Italy was a 3-1 win. They scored seven goals to Italy's four. Works out around about 1.75 goals a game ratio. Up against Italy's one. Um, uh, the last time I played that, in fact, was a draw way back in, of course, January 2018. It was 1-1. It was a friendly. Last time that uh, France won was a long, long time ago. Over 12 years ago, back in September 2010, it was in the quarterfinal stage or qualifying round of the World Cup. Big 3-2 three, three, win it was for France. France Cup on the back of a 4-0 win over Cameroon. Back-to-back -back clean sheets for them. Heading into as well. Up against Italy, also back-to-back -back clean sheets. Beating Lithuania and then, of course, Switzerland. Uh, a long, long time ago. They haven't been in action since July. So they might be a bit rusty heading into this game. But the odds for this one, 94 on is your French. 72 is your Jordan. 94 is, of course, uh, Italy. Millie, what you got for this? I said for him to draw. Draw, big draw for a big... Is it a score draw? Nil, nil. Can't remember. What did you put? Do you remember? No. No, uh, well, we'll find out in a second. Uh, of course, any standouts for France or Italy as they lock horns on July 10th? Um, so France have got Marie Antoinette Kitotto uh -huh. and Italy have got Barbara Bonacy. I think there you go. Name. There's two names for you to keep an eye out, as of course we hope to get the results, and hopefully it will go for a two-one win for France, because that's what I've gone. But she's gone Millie's one with a big six-goal thriller, three-three. Let's hope it is that one, because that would be an absolute treat to watch. But that is it. Join me and Millie on Super Brew, of course, for the predictions. Get your name in there; it is free. Get your name in lights, and of course, hopefully I can catch Millie before she goes on summer break uh, next week for the next round of matches, match number two. Uh, and then hopefully we'll see who's actually kicking ass and taking names. But anyway, make sure you get your predictions down below and, of course, add the Super Brew as well. And there you have it, folks. There you bloody have it. Now, of course, don't forget about the Prediction League. It is free to enter. Get your name in the likes. Of course, use this. It's, it's Super Brew. A lot of points on offer. You can get multiple points for getting the score bang on the nose. Uh, 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 some points for getting close to the money. And, of course, there's no points if you, if you don't. But, of course, we'll bring you regular updates for this. And we'll start with that in match number two, part one. We'll be back. Hopefully, we'll be back with Millie as well. Uh, as, of course, she is our resident expert for the ladies game. And, again, this is something new that we've been looking at. Uh, and, hopefully, 
hopefully something we're going to continue into the new season. Of course, I've been trying to uh, maybe take a little look at um, the ladies of Blackburn Rovers content. So well, we'll see. We'll see how it all pans out. And again, make sure to check out the Cass's videos, uh, the Cats predictions for the Euros. But that is it, guys. That is it. Smash your subscribe, smash the thumbs up, smash the little bell. Of course, we'll be back for match number two very, very soon. But until then, boys, enjoy the content and all that kind of stuff. And until then, guys and ladies and boys and girls, we're out.